You're about to listen to a podcast full of wonder, excitement, and discovery. It's time for an adventure through Odyssey. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Adventures Through Odyssey podcast, Odyssey Revisited. I'm Will here with John, and it's time for that time of the month we all love so much, the News Roundup, for August this time. So, we didn't get a lot of news, uh, so it's going to be a lot about the comics. I had another AI script written, and we've got the final episode of Precious Lord. So, I will say quickly, the bite-sized adventure ended, where Bart's mayor, and so basically... It's a newspaper clipping of Bart leaving. Then the Odyssey Owl saying Jared doomed us all. And then it's Wit and Jared kind of talking it out like, Jared, I know you feel bad right now, but you did the right thing. Then it just ends and it's Renee saying, this could be great for future inventions and stuff, or future viewing and stuff. So basically it implies to me they will do another one eventually. Yeah, that's fair. So, you know, that, that was fun, but let's get on to the meat. The new monthly comic, or the, yeah, the new weekly comic. Okay. So, obviously, it's a different art style. Yes. Okay. I don't think it's inherently a bad style. I do think a problem is, is that the other one kind of simulated a good job of kind of like a more classic Odyssey style. With, like, the newer, like, concept art. Yes. So I do think that was a better style. I think you described it as manga-esque. Yes. Um, I, I wouldn't quite put it as that. You know, it doesn't always necessarily strike me as looking like Odyssey. But I don't think that's the worst thing. I think my issue purely with the style is just sometimes the characters look very inconsistent from, like, frame to frame. Yeah, that, that was my biggest thing, that it feels like a very loose style. Like, sometimes it does look like Connie. Like, sometimes I'm like, that is Connie. And sometimes I'm like, if it, it's not the fact that she's wearing the same clothes, I wouldn't think that was the same character. And like, and like, and like Mr. Barkley, you know, sometimes he looks like Mr. Barkley. Sometimes he looks like Mitt Romney. It kind of just like goes, it kind of like goes around. <laughs> To talk about character designs, I agree. So one interesting thing is Donna has basically had the same character design since they introduced the character. You don't see it very much, but it, it is consistent. But Jimmy looks like the self-insert Odyssey character that one of our cousins would have drawn. Well, maybe a little bit. I think the problem is we actually have heard from Jimmy since he's been an adult. So I think they were, I mean, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and make it seem like they were trying to, like, figure out how to do it, the more modern Jimmy from, like, what, album 40 or something? Yeah, I was about to say, because how old is Jimmy supposed to be in this? Because he looks like he could still be teenage Jimmy, but... Well, that's what, I, I have to think they're supposed to be in their, like, 20s. Okay. But it is weird because Stuart looks so young in the one shot he's in. Yes. Stuart looks like he's about like five or six. Right. And to be fair, they were teenagers when they had Stuart. So it's not out of right, the it's question. Right. Not, it's not out of the question. But but still, I would I would think Stuart should be like maybe entering middle school. But who knows? Yeah, so on to the actual story. So if you don't know what happens, spoilers abound. Connie drives up to Pokenberry Falls to help Donna with her wedding to a man whose last name is Barkley, but it's spelled differently. I thought that was a funny joke. I thought it was a funny joke. I mean, it is clearly so if in the fiction of the radio show they ever have to bring the Barkleys up again, they can still call her Donna Barkley without confusing everybody. Yeah, basically. If I had to assume the meta reason. I like that Jimmy points it out. That's a solid joke. Uh, you know, hmm. I did not understand why Connie was there for a good chunk of it. Like, it kind of felt like, well, she just there to comment on things like, so Jimmy, still going for that goatee? Yeah. Which, then, you know, in the last part this month, so the last one we have read is the cake shopping scene. Yeah. Okay, so if you don't know what's going on, Donna basically uh, tries to force her husband onto Mr. Barkley as a church musician. Yeah. 
Which, which okay. is funny. I, I don't know. Is the idea that the comic is the idea going to be that like they decide not to be near? So like I'm, I'm like slightly confused what the compromise is going to be. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I was wondering. So I, I want to start by saying from a character standpoint, this actually makes a lot of sense. Donna never hated her family, but she always kind of complained a lot about family activities. So I could totally see a scenario where she went for college, went away for college and didn't look back for a few years. Like, that did not feel out of place. But yeah, so, um, is the idea going to be he needs to give up his music and they're going to move to Pokenberry Falls? Or are they going to find someplace that's generally close, but not in Pokenberry? I kind of feel like it's going to be that first one because this is focused on the family. Well, yeah, but it's weird, right? Because they said, like, I don't want him to have to give up on his dream for us to be, or like his calling. And then it's like, well, have you talked to God about, and he's, she's like, I want to be near my family. So I'm a little, I'm. I don't think it's, I think it's actually a decent concept for a comic and a reason to bring back the Barclays. I don't really know where it's going to go, and I can't imagine it's going to go for more than, well, I don't know. I don't know if this is going to be like a long-term comic or a shorter one. So the shortest one they've had is the Barton Rodney try to sell bad calculators one, which was seven panels. Yeah. So. Just because it seems like they're going to hit it soon, but I also could imagine them doing some shenanigans at the wedding exactly now and and i will say this uh i was a little worried that is this comic going to make us try to be on donna's side because look our father is a pastor i sided with mr barkley a little bit because you do need to play to your audience to a degree yeah there's doing things to bring in new people then there's going full rock and roll well, and I think the comic is implying, is like saying that they agree with that, right? Because Connie and Mr. Barkley are both like, mm. Yes. Yes, I was like, I, I totally agree. I was never against Donna, but I was like, okay, if I'm running a church, I see where Mr. Barkley's coming from on this one. I do think it's funny that he's hardcore rocking out to Jesus Loves Me. Yes. Yes. I, I, I'm sure a video like that exists, but that was pretty good. Yeah. Okay, why don't we go to... Yeah. The club for the month. Maybe be a good children's pastor. I don't know. The club for the month. We need to talk about the free monthly comic. Oh, okay. Did you read it? No. So it's Camilla and making her triumphant return to Odyssey canon, BZ. Ah. On the, at the top of the stairs in Wit's End, which now has a spiral staircase, ready to skateboard down, and Wit comes running up. Wait, you two! Don't go down in the skate, you know, don't go down on the skateboard. That could be dangerous. Then Camilla says, Mr. Whitaker, didn't you ever do anything stupid when you were a kid? I don't think she said the word stupid. I doubt folks on the family would approve of that. But um, then we flash to a few images of Wit doing crazy things. And then Wit says, maybe my childhood isn't the childhood we should be basing our actions off of. And then it says, join us at the end of August for the final Young Wit book. So it's another ad for... Oh, I gotcha. So. I like how a lot of these free comics are ads. I, I do tend to agree. So yeah, that that is it. The only other piece of news we got, and I maybe just missed this last time, is we did get one more episode title. And it's called A Hero's Laundry. Trey tries to figure out where he fits in in a family of difference makers. I mean, it'll be interesting to see, right? Because I feel like they keep kind of setting up, like, Trey and, like, he feels inferior to his family to some extent. Yes. I mean, that's what this club episode covers a little bit. Although this sounds a little bit like it could be an... I don't know. I guess it's probably more that he's going to do the laundry in the house or something. Yeah, I was about... This is going to pay off of him doing the laundry, isn't it? Or I was like, is there going to be some weird, like, Imagination Station adventure? But it's probably going to be that, which will be interesting. But we'll see. Uh, let's move on to the episode, Precious Lord, Part 2. The story of the father of gospel music continues. Okay, so I thought this part was far more interesting than the first part. Yes, I do very much I agree. think I think this is quite a good second half episode. I think there's a lot of really good emotion in this episode. I think it does a good job conveying his life and like bringing you to a point where it's like, whoa, this song really does hit well, like how they play it. Like it does hit very well emotionally. 
I do think I they could have maybe add some of this episode in the first part because I feel like this episode goes at such a quick pace. Yes, I do agree with that. And I don't think that's bad. I mean, I don't think I should, I don't want to discourage a quick pace. But I was like, we are flying through this man's life. Yeah, I did think that too. Like part one was this kind of decently paced episode. Then part two, we just floor it. Yeah. Um, which I don't mind. It, it is a very good story. I mean, I I like this episode because I do feel like this is a okay. I will say this. I and maybe they don't sing this song a lot in the Presbyterian Church. I've never heard this song before. I feel like I've heard it. I just haven't sung it very often. Yeah, like, I have probably have heard it before, but it's just not that common to me. So, I mean, like they're like, oh, like, you this song? You wrote this song? I'm like, I don't really know this song. I'm surprised the Church and Odyssey sings it. Yeah. Um, but I do think it's a good story, and I do think meaning because right he did influence most songs and how a lot of gospel music is sung so even if i don't know all the songs super well it does a really good job and the song hits really well just given everything so i, I think a very good i think very good episode no i i totally agree i did find it kind of hard to swallow we go from his wife and son dying, which i understand was probably what inspired him to write the song to five minutes later him asking wit and trey can i get an amen <laughs> Yeah, it's a little weird, but I mean, tonal you know. thing. I mean, I wouldn't have wanted a three part episode, but I think we could have distributed some of the story better in part one. That's what I felt like, but yeah, I still think it's probably one of the better historical episodes in recent years. Yeah, and I understand what the plot of this episode is that like Trey needs to learn about the future, and sometimes your future isn't clearer than God makes it clear for you. This was to me more of an episode about lukewarm Christianity. Yeah, I get that. So that could just be my imagination. But no, I thought it was really good. I like that they bring his wife in for part of it. They yeah, could have tied in the whole. Although thing. it is, it is sad that then the wife just stops talking after the wife dies in the narrative, even though narratively both these characters are dead. Yeah, that that's a good point. I didn't yeah. think about that, but you're right. Uh, I there was there anything else I wanted to know because I feel like we need to talk about this episode a little more. Um, right, it's hard when it's like I do think it's like a, with your premise, right? I think there's a lot of decent stories you can like, you know, themes you can take from this. I do think it's like the whole tray is like uncertain about the future. I feel like it would have worked a little better had he had his own personal issue that was a little more analogous to this, at least in terms of like, not knowing what Christ specific, like God specifically wants for him. Where in this case, I feel like it's weird because his talking before him is like a lot of uncertain stuff in the world. And it's like talking about greater. It, it seemed like he was almost talking about like greater societal issues. Yeah. It can't sound like Trey was watching too much CNN. Wow. I don't know. I wouldn't go that far. But like, well, because he's saying his parents were talking about stuff, which I don't know, right? Because, I mean, his parents are very like, are both doctors and science oriented. So I don't, I don't know if they were like, I listened to that. And I'm like, are they like trying to hint at like climate change stuff without actually like hinting at it? I think it's possible. Like, I don't know if the Odyssey writers all are like, yeah, this is a, probably an issue, but they know they, like, can't s flat out say that without getting in trouble. I don't know. I I'm curious what they were thinking, or if they were thinking about, like, I don't know. It's hard to tell with Odyssey writers, like, because it could also just be, like, people being like, oh, the socialists are getting too out of hand, you know? And who, well, like, who, who knows what they were referring to? But it, it like... I think it would have maybe, like, hit better to know, like, I don't know what God wants me to do. Like, it's it's a very kind of general thing they, like, threw out in the first part. And it, like, it is a very personal thing what happened with this guy. 
I very so much just, agree. So I'm just curious. Yeah, I do kind of wonder why they never tied it back to uh, Jenny and Jerry, because, you know, we, I may as because we just mentioned last month, hey, you know, Wit's son and wife also died, and I think it's trying to mirror that a little bit. Yeah, it probably would have been good to to have a little drop of that in there, but they didn't, so... I know it's hard because I think this is a very good episode and I think the history is super interesting, but it would just be us talking about like, oh, this is the history of this man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm, I'm good. Yeah, I am. I think that's good. I did the web quest. It's more about gospel music and people who perform it. So uh, next month is allegedly an episode called alibis, which Features the guy Jewel stood up the prom for, or whatever that was. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, that wraps it up. Uh, you will probably be hearing our thoughts on The Best is Yet to Come Part 2 shortly, and we're going to record it right now. So I'm Will. I'm John. We'll see you next time. <laughs>